couple of thrift stores that I really like here locally, like in my area, there's tons of thrift stores in the whole Houston area, but in my little area, there's one down the street that um, always has really good stuff. I never walk out of there empty handed, but I get a lot of books and stuff there. And a few days ago I went and I spent, I got all of this, I don't know if you can see it all. I got all of this at that thrift store, and I think it was $17. Yeah, the total was $17. I did get some more things, too, because I got a couple of pumpkins for Halloween and, and a couple other little things. But still, that's pretty good, considering what I got. Um, I got, okay, let's do these first. The hardback books, I always, I take a lot of time looking through the hardback books, and I usually just kind of, you know, there's so many at like thrift stores and Goodwill that you can't really spend a lot of time reading titles and, you know, I just kind of scan the books. I look for books that are old, um, not like valuable antique old, but old like the spine's coming off, it's water damaged, that kind of old. Old and icky. I just kind of scan the the spines, looking for those. I also, if they're on a shelf where I can see the tops of the books, I will look for books that have um, illustrations for pictures. And you can kind of tell because, see, they'll have, you can see that there's some dark pages in there, so you know that book's got illustrations in it. I look for those because um, I want to see the pictures of that. And then I'll, I'll pull them out, I'll flip through them, if the text catches my eye, I might get it, or if the pictures are good, I'll get it. And that's kind of how I decide. This one um, caught my eye because it's kind of an older book. It doesn't have a paper cover on it, so I pulled it out. And it's, a, it's analytic geometry. I don't normally buy a lot of textbooks. Um, occasionally I will. Um, I have a lot of dictionaries, so I don't really look for those anymore. Um, if they're foreign language, um, I'll be more likely to buy them. I like foreign language, especially math foreign language books, because those are just extra confusing. But this one, I thought, well, it's okay. It's not really anything special. Um, didn't really, didn't really thrill me until I got to the back. It's still got its little library thing, and look, it's got its library card with all the little uh, stamps from the late 50s and early 60s. Okay, that was worth my dollar right there. So I grabbed that one. This one is a Funk and Wagnalls Standard Reference Encyclopedia. They only had this um, one volume. It was number one. I got it because when I flipped through it, I liked some of the pictures. It has some, some tables. It has a whole section of maps. See, those are some pretty good maps. And then these tables like this. See, it's easy to, because you can run this through your printer and print an image on it. And, you know, anything that has like small, repetitive type like that, like a dictionary page, it runs easy through your printer. So, this one, oh, and I really like the end papers. Cause it's got the, the Declaration of Independence. So, grab that one. This one is a Nick Bantock Sabine's Notebook from the Griffin and Sabine Trilogy. I have, I think, Almost everything Nick Van Tock has ever written, including um, Griffin and Sabine trilogy, um, I'm not willing to cut up my own, so I was excited to grab this one. And these books are great because it's got Nick Van Tock's original, you know, it's got his artwork in it, but the Griffin and Sabine books are about, there are correspondence between two people. so. A lot of the pages have 
envelopes with stuff in it. There's postcards. There's letters. So, you know, this is just, it already comes pre-packed full of little ephemera thingies. So, heck yeah, grab that. And this is, <clears throat> oh, I meant to look this up before I started talking about it. It's about Robert Stoltz. Um, and I grabbed it because I saw the top of it and saw that it had pictures. And then I flipped through it, and it's got some really great old pictures. It is, I don't know if it's written in German or, um, Dutch. I don't know, <coughs> excuse me, what that language is, but it, it, it's written in a foreign language, which I like because that's kind of cool. And then it has all these great pictures. And I think he was some kind of, I don't know if he was an actor or musician or something. That's all I could gather from this. But I meant to Google it and just didn't do it. So that's why I bought that book. Those are some good pages in there. This one had an icky cover. I almost always get rid of the, the paper covers on the books unless I think that I will use them. They have cool artwork because they're just kind of gross. This one had a gross cover on it. And it is called Creatures of Paradise. And again, I saw the top of it, saw that it had illustrations. So I looked inside. And it has some pretty neat pictures of some animals. And um, some are real, some are mythological. Some are pictures, photos, some are illustrations. But it's just kind of, um, I like it. You know, there's just cool pictures in there that I can use. So, that's why I grabbed that one. This one, the same thing, full of pictures. They had several of these. They had one like on Africa and one on Asia. This one's on the poles, north and south, I assume. And it's got um, a lot of landscapey type pictures, but not, um, some of them are kind of older looking, you know. So, oh. so anyway, there's all kinds of stuff in there that I can use. So those are the hardback books that I chose and the reasons that I chose them. They had this on a different rack. It was a dollar. It's one of those old school bookkeeping ledgers. I used to actually do bookkeeping in a ledger like this. That's how old I am. And it, this is not particularly old, old, like, you know, vintage or anything but it is full of these um, ledger pages that I always put in my smash books because, you know, they're just great to write on. So it's got a bunch of those. So that's why I chose that. And I also look for um, blank journals um, or somewhat blank journals. Written in journals would be fine. I don't hardly ever find those. And um, I do sometimes sift through greeting cards. They have this little set, and it has all of these cards, and they're really cute. It has envelopes to go with them, but I just could see this as, you know, binding these together to make a little book, and then using this to put, you know, one book on this side and one on this side. I just you know, thought that would be really cute. I already have an idea for it, so I had to buy it. I can't just leave it there with an idea already in place. You can't do that. Um, Franklin Covey lined paper. I think these were about 50 cents. So that's just more good lined paper. Another stationary deal. It has some envelopes and some papers in it that would be good for Smash books, junk journals, whatever. This is a 1999 standard diary. Again, it's just full of blank lined pages. Good for journals. This one is called On Screen, a film journal. And I, I think it's for, you know, like if you go to a movie and you want to write notes about movies. Uh, that's what it is. But it's got cool pages. I like the colors. They got lines. 
meets my criteria. And it was, I think, 75 cents. I don't know what this is. I don't know if this was a handmade something, if it was a store-bought something. I just don't know. But it's a, it's a thing, and it's got chipboard divider things. So, um, you know, it, it came with its own awesomeness, right? So I had to buy it. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. It'll be fabulous, I'm sure, but I, I don't know what. Um, and this one is an army, like a workout journal, where army people write how much they bench press and their squats and push-ups and curls and it's their whole little thing. And I figure my tax dollars have probably already paid for this. So um, I gave the thrift store another dollar for it and paid for it twice, I'm sure. But that's okay, it's kind of neat. And a woman's notebook. This is a little girly journal that has the pages are not lined, but they're they got little you know framey things. And each page has a, a different um, quote from a woman on it. And some of them are kind of pretty. So those will make good pages. So those are the blank journals that I picked up. And these, I rarely even glance at the paperback books because there's just seldom anything that I need in there. And if there is something in there, there's usually so many paperback books, I just kind of think, oh, it, it can stay because I'm not going to mess with it. But I did kind of look through them this time, and I'm glad I did because this was stuck in there. It's a paperback kind of water damage thing. It says Meisterwerk. Again, I don't know. German, whatever. But it, it's a museum book. These are awesome when you can find these because, you know, it has pictures of the museum's collection. So, you know, every page in here is usable, which is pretty cool. So, got that one. And then another section, which I think sometimes you tend to overlook, is the magazine rack. Don't overlook the magazine rack, because in my thrift store, they're a quarter, they're 25 cents for the magazines, and they're um, kind of loose about what they call a magazine. They call this one a magazine, um, but that's okay, because I needed it. This is quotations from the letters of Vincent Van Gogh to his brother, Theo. So this has all kinds of quotes from Van Gogh. So these will be really cool to put in a junk journal. And plus, you know, it's a nice color because I get kind of tired of plain. So this is pretty cool. And then it had this in it. I don't know what this is. Um, it's... It looks old, but I'm inclined to think that it's not. I'm inclined to think that it was made to look old, but it's really not. But then again, maybe it is because the phone numbers they have on here are just four digits, you know, like we did back in the day. But it's some kind of a, a talent show, and then it has all of these advertisements. You know, those are the, the companies that sponsored the talent show. And... Um, it's, they seem to be old companies, you know. I mean, there's not any, any dot-coms on here. <laughs> but, the, and there's no date. There's, there's July 20th, 21st, and 22nd in Altoona, Wisconsin. Adults 25 cents, children 15 cents. Sponsored by the Methodist Church Ladies Aid. Okay, so, you know, it's got a very old look, and it may be old, you know, um, mid-century or, or maybe a little bit earlier but the reason that I, I have trouble thinking that it is is because it's not I mean the paper is perfect it hasn't discolored at all it's not brittle and you know this kind of paper usually gets brittle and starts to crumble 
Um, so that's why I'm wondering, you know, this, this may be a, a reproduction instead of a vintage piece. I don't really know. I will just have to do some research on that. But it's kind of cool either way. I don't care, you know, because I'm not in it for the value. I'm just in it for the coolness factor. So I got that one. Got a couple of issues of the New Yorker because they usually always have fun covers on them. And they're, and you know, they've got their usual um, cartoons. There are a lot of political cartoons and um, stuff inside that I can use too. So for 25 cents, that's Keeper. This I picked up off the magazine rack. It is news from the Texas A&M Foundation, summer of 2007. I don't know what this is. I don't really care. It's some kind of, um, you know, A&M news, whatever. Anyway, but I, I picked it up and I got it because I like the pages. I don't know if you can see here, but they're kind of a um, almost sepia-toned pages. And I just like the color. I think they would make a good good addition to a journal. So that's why I chose that. These. This is called Old News. And they're two little publications that are full of old news. Um, the Alamo Falls. You know, okay, that was a while ago. So it's just kind of like a... Um, a um, a publication that reprints different events in history. It's kind of cool. So I think, you know, set this in some coffee, age it real good. This is this will be really cool. So that was worth my two bit. And this one is the story of America, the first five hundred years. And I got this one because it has a lot of good pictures of America and American stuff, you know. So, see, that's kind of cool. Yeah, so there's things I can use in there. They're nice, big, glossy pictures. So, that's what I picked up at the thrift store, and that is how I chose what to buy. I also have, um, I have a box of envelopes in my art room that I keep envelopes in and I, I pick these up at different places there's if you check I think it's office max usually has in the back of their store like a little clearance rack and sometimes they'll have good stuff on there and you can sometimes find boxes of these coin envelopes you can find boxes of shipping tags um, and regular envelopes like this and if you can catch, if you're at a place that sells greeting cards, and if you can catch the greeting card rep there when they are weeding out their stock, you know, and putting in the seasonal cards, they usually toss these. You know, they'll take their old cards back and do whatever it is they do with them, but they don't keep the envelopes. So if you can find a greeting card rep at a place that sells greeting cards, you can sometimes score a bunch of free envelopes from them. So, I keep all kinds of those in a box. I love these little glassine envelopes. I just ordered some more of these yesterday. I got them off eBay. I like a hundred of them for, I think with shipping and everything, it was five dollars. So it wasn't bad. Um, sorry about that. My memory card filled up. So uh, I had to stop and download, and then I got busy, and you know stuff happened. And my family came home, so now it's a day later. But I'm gonna finish what I was talking about. I can remember what I was talking about, and I even wore the same clothes so that it wouldn't look weird, you know, having like two different outfits in one video. You know, <laughs> I could see Academy Awards, and I, I change outfits midway. You know, um, but. I guess there was no point in really wearing the same shirt if I'm going to tell you that it's a day later, so I should have thought that through a little better. Anyway, oh, and you may have noticed when I was watching the last one, I kept seeing my thumbnail. I had one silver thumbnail because I went to Ulta to get a new hairbrush, and of course I had to try some nail polish, and 
I'm not really a nail polish person, but I do polish my toes. They stay polished all the time, but fingernails not so much because I'm too hard on my hands. But I was testing out the silver polish and really liked it, so I bought it and then forgot that I had one silver fingernail until I watched the video yesterday. So I decided to just go ahead and silver up the rest of them and just be festive today. So I have silver nails, which are going to really distract me and cause all kinds of problems. So hope you're happy. Um, I was talking about where I um, find paper that I use in the day books and smash books and stuff, and I was up to this point, which is notepads and stuff like that. Um, I just collect, and most of them I get for free, um, or at least near free, because you can almost always find office supply stuff like at garage sales and thrift stores and um, your mom's closet might be a real good place to look. It, I scored huge in my mom's closet. So um, I just pick them up wherever I can. And a lot of them you get for free. Like if you stay in a hotel, they sometimes have, you know, um, either a notepad by the phone or they'll have some stationery in a drawer. Well, you know, you need to take that home with you because I guarantee you, you paid for it. So, you know, why not? Take it home with all the little shampoos. So that's what all this is. Just random notepads. Some I bought deeply discounted. Most of them were free. Um, there's a lot of pharmaceutical type stuff, which, you know, whatever. I'm fine. They've got lines. It works. Um, but I just, you know, pick up whatever I can find. They, they're they all usable. All different sizes. Big, small. I love these long skinny ones like this. Um, whenever I can find these, I usually grab them. And a lot of the times you can find these at the dollar store. And they have a magnet on the back because they're for like, you know, your grocery list or whatever. But I, I really like those. And if they have lines on them, oh, it's like heaven. Just heaven. So that's what all these are. And these um, accounting ledger sheets I really like. They're easy to find too. And then I have some graph paper. I love all kinds of graph paper. That's an old one. This is some onion onion paper. Remember when we used to use that? I can't remember what we used it for, but we used to always use that onion skin paper for something. I don't know. It's back in the days of the typewriter. I guess we did something with it with the typewriter. Graph paper, and then these little legal pad things. So, um, all this is really good um, smash book stuff. And I keep it in this little thing, and it sits on my desk in the living room, that desk that I never use. And it, it just kind of sits here, and, you know, so it's all in one place. Old phone books, those are good sources of paper as well, and free and easy to come by. And then, of course, I have my junk mail bin. And, oh, this, I just tore these out the other day, so I was cleaning out some other stuff. And these are their magazine pages, and I've already got them folded for a book. But they're from craft magazines. And it was from, I think, an issue of Somerset Studio, or one of those. But these are excellent pages for junk journals because they've already got the art on them. You know, they're colorful, they've got good stuff on them, they're ready to go. So, you know, that big stack of Somerset Studio that's you've got piled in your closet that, you know, you're just keeping because you can't bear to throw them away? Toss them. I tossed all mine out before we moved, and I'm very glad that I did because those things take up space. But before you toss them, pull out the good pictures because those are good. In fact, I've got one journal right here. I made this one a couple days ago. And I don't know what I'm going to do about this. I, I love it. I love the cover. I love the um, construction. I love the pages. I use the, the um, craft magazine pages along with some of my notepad stuff. What I don't love is the binding. And I've done this binding before, but I used, the cardstock I used was too heavy for this, so it's really stiff. 
And normally, I, I guess I used a lighter weight cardstock because it um, is normally very, you know, bendy, pliable, and, and it just works much better than this, what I got going on right now. So the binding is bothering me, and uh, I don't know what I'm going to do about that. I'm going to see if I can just rip it out without messing up the signatures, because there's three signatures, if you can see, and they're sewn into an accordion folded piece of cardstock, you know, simple. Um, but it's just not working for me. And I've done a lot of sewing and stuff on the pages in the signature, so I don't want to narf them up, you know, so I'm hoping that I can get that accordion cardstock out of there without destroying the cover. You know, of course I'll have to redo, you know, cover up the spine from where I cut it out, but that's, that's no big deal. Because I really like the cover, but this, this binding is just not working for me. So, but those um, craft magazine pages make excellent smashbook pages. And my junk mail, or, you know, stuff that comes into the house, that um, I want to keep. I have to stick in this bin. It's got some magazine pages. It's got duck mail. It's got envelopes. It's got um, paper bags. It's got catalog pages. Um, just, you know, anything that I think I might be able to use. So, that's what goes in there. And, um, so that's it. Finding paper for your um, junk journals and smash books is really easy. It doesn't cost a lot. Chances are you have stuff around your house that you can use and didn't even realize. You just have to go looking for it. And then the rest you can pick up, you know, at thrift stores or garage sales really cheap. So um, that's it. I have other videos to make today. So um, I will get busy on that and just say that that's all. Bye.